You've just entered the Storyteller.net Amphitheater. 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 You're listening to me, Sean Bavala, talk to Laura Packer. I am the publisher at the Small Tooth Dog Publishing Group based in Arizona, and we are talking about the new book that she has coming out to be released by us at the end of 2018. And that book is From Audience to Zeal, the ABCs of Finding, Crafting, and Telling a Great Story. You know, we've we've spoken so far about kind of the, the bigger issues and a little background and stuff. Let's let's narrow down a little bit and let's start talking about this book in particular. Uh, in my mind, the book is somewhat like a dictionary because there's there's all these words, there's all the A words and B words and C words. It's something like an encyclopedia because you can kind of dig in there and go in depth on ethics, for example. You can go in depth in there. But this book feels to me, and I've been working in the initial edit work and all of that, so I've seen it a lot. This book feels less like an encyclopedia or a dictionary and more like this kind of deep yet familiar conversational blog. Blog is such a throwaway word, but, but it's deeper than that. So my question to you is, is why, why do these entries feel more familiar than just being dictionary or encyclopedia entries? Well, the first response to that is that um, I'm a storyteller. So I want my writing when I'm being, when it's instructive writing, to be engaging for the reader and accessible to the reader. And of course, all writers want that. But I think that an advantage storytellers have is that we are very focused on our audience's needs. When I write fiction, for example, that is more focused on my need and what I need to say, perhaps to myself. But when I'm writing about storytelling, I'm very interested in making it as conversational and digestible as possible without also, without, without making it dilute, without diluting the content, without making, without talking down to my audience at all right. or anything like that. So that's, that's the first part of the answer. The second part of the answer is that this project started on my blog. Okay. Um, so it started in a setting where I was deliberately writing to audience, an audience I could not predict and where I was talking about different concepts and, and practices in storytelling. But part of what I also was doing was saying, this is who I am and being quite, and being as authentic as I could about my being, my being the, the narrator. I wasn't trying to remove myself as the narrator as, as you will often find in a textbook, for example. Right. In the textbook, the narrator is as removed as possible, and so it becomes rather dry. In this case, it's me, and I'm the one who's talking to you. And because I started doing this in a blog, I was able to develop a very conversational and pr practical and, um, I think, intimate voice in many ways. And that has followed through into Audience to Zeal because I want my audience to feel like they're sitting down with someone and having a conversation about these different ideas and having a chance to mull over the concepts themselves and feeling welcomed into the conversation. That's a great image, feeling welcomed into the conversation. I think that that fits from the very first draft of this that I got from you to the editing work we're doing now. We want people to feel like they're talking to not a uh, erudite coach, right? although you certainly are a deep thinker, but someone who really can help you to help people to go, this is something you really need to know. That's been a goal of every book that we've released through the Small Tooth Dog Publishing Group is we, and we make these editing choices on that that some people don't always agree with, but we make these editing choices that keep the conversational nature of the content going. I mm -hmm. think that's a hallmark of some of the stuff that we're doing is we want people to feel like this is a, a immensely practical and immediate. And I certainly got that when I, when I first got the text from you, that it was, it was practical and immediate and um, it wasn't bloggish. And I just threw up my first idea, which, which mm -hmm. none, of, none of this reads like that. None of this reads like, Oh, I, I hope I can fill enough space if, <laughs> <laughs> But we're definitely not there on filling enough space. 
that is not a problem. <laughs> yeah, I have stuff to say. <laughs> yes, yeah, you do, and it's and it's like, oh, so is this two volumes? What should we do with this? <laughs> so conversation yeah, that you and I have had, yeah. It was so important to me that, and remains so important to me that that I neither shield my audience from the depth and rigor of what it is to be a good storyteller. But nor do I do I present it in such a way that they feel like it's never attainable, that they can't reach it. I have come to believe that if you set a high bar for people, that if you set set expectations for people that are fairly high, but they know that you believe in them, that they will be much more likely to achieve greater things. And my hope is that the tone of audience to zeal does that and says, I'm meeting you as an intellectual equal. Here are some complicated and complex ideas broken down into ways that you can follow and understand and then use. Right. Um, right. I want it to be practic- pra- practical and usable. Right. And I think that, I think that you've, you've achieved that. Uh, I'm slightly distracted at the moment by, again, we're in an office that we're the small tooth dog publishing group. We don't publish books about dogs but dogs are a big, huge, giant deal in our lives. And so I don't know if the dogs that are losing their minds at the front door right now are coming through or not, but it's an office and it's alive. (laughs) I'm not hearing them. How many dogs do you have? Uh, We have, uh, we have three. Uh, We're on our fifth rescue dog. Uh, my son's company is Three Lost Dogs, and he mm-hmm. publishes, he, speaking about books, he publishes books and online training. And so uh, we began with one rescue dog, and that was the Three Lost Dogs. He had three at once. <laughs> Two of them have moved on to the Rainbow Bridge, as they say. Dog number three is still with us, and he's really ancient and is not going anywhere. <laughs> and then we're on dogs four and five. So four and five, which is, includes a very interesting purebred Malinois. So anyway, that's totally off topic, but, but that's, that's what right. we have. And it's super busy here. <laughs> but that's what it's all about, isn't it? Sharing those stories of our lives. Yes. And, and sharing those things that build connection, telling the stories that in, evoke empathy and, and relationship. Right. And that's what you just did with your dogs. Right. And, and you told me so much about your life and just that little conversation. And that's why storytelling is a basic part of what it is to be human. Precisely. So how did there. we get yeah. there? That, no, you're exactly right. How did we get, how did we get to having all these dogs in the house and, uh, <laughs> and, and what does it mean? So I agree with you that there's these basic human touch points. And one of them is, so what kind of pets do you have? Right. <laughs> you know, you've been listening to the storyteller.net amphitheater, all rights reserved. No part or whole may be reproduced in any manner for any reason without the express written permission of Storyteller.net.